Okay. So if you watched my previous video where I did a little bit of engine configuring, you may have come to the realization that yes, it's time to do the V16. So if you haven't watched the last one, yes, BMG has some files which are just kind of sitting there unutilized as of yet. And today we're going to look at the V16 and maybe see what it's like and see how viable a V16 actually is. But first, there is actually a pretty big problem. And that's making it fit into something. This is my Moonhawk. It's a Group 5 absolute beast. It's got a big ass twin turbo V8. And as you can see, you're not fitting another V8 in front of there. The other option for the first time is a transversely mounted V8. But still, once again, not enough room. And to be honest, even if you took out the transmission, I don't think you're fitting another V8 in there. But then finally, the one which would be closest for it to fit would really have to be this. The ETK 800 series. There is quite a bit of room. But I'm going to be honest, probably still not enough. Now, I could just do a little bit of like an engine sticking out of the front of the car like last time. But that's because it was... I, I just wanted to have a little bit of fun. I had in my mind a vision of a V12 trying to fit into a Covet. I know, I'm stupid, but it's what I wanted to do. And for this one, what I had envisioned in my mind was like a stretched out long nose vehicle. And that got me thinking, which cars haven't I really done a lot to? And that would be something like the Basto, the Blue Buck, maybe a truck, maybe a Legrand, but that's uh, transversely mounted. And it's definitely not fitting in one of the Scintillas. The Scintillas are way too tight and compact. And also, I, what looks good with an extended nose? I'm thinking like the Blue Buck or the Basto, and I think we're gonna go the Basto. Mostly because I haven't done anything with this before and I think it would look great with an extended front end. So here we are at Henderson's garage and we're going to do some work. Wait, hold on, is there anything in here? Damn it, I was hoping there might be something in there. I could make this even cooler. Anyway, you get the idea. And to start off, we're gonna need to grab the Basto body. So there is only one body option. Hmm. And is that like the main J-beam? Oh God, please don't be. No. Okay, we're, we're good. The main J-beam is still its own thing, so we'll just be grabbing Basto body for now. It's Blender where we're gonna start getting a little bit tricky. I don't think we need the big hood, but I suppose we could save that for now. If I could not stretch the suspension, uh, you know what, actually, I, I think stretching the suspension is gonna be unavoidable. So here's where I have a little bit of a choice. Do I have the engine hanging over? So just like uh, the suspension, the engine on top, and just the extra engine in front, which would be silly, and I don't particularly wanna do that one. Or do I move the suspension forwards and have the engine being teetered on the front axle, which is very normal sort of American road car or do I go like a GT sort of thing where the axle is way far forwards and at the front of the engine kind of making it a front mid engine kind of like your Corvettes or your AMG GT sort of looking thing. I think I want to try that. I think I want to have a front mid mount for this. That's that's what I think I'm going to go with. It's just lots of moving things forwards. We actually don't even need suspension. Uh, because that's going to be told to move forwards. The subframe, though, is going to be changed. Let's uh, start by undoing that tilt because that's going to be a problem. Probably poke out the front of the car. Then let's move it forwards to line up approximately. Okay, that's how far forward this needs to come. I suppose we'll just start by grabbing this and just stretch it out to the front. How's that look? It looks <laughs> really bad. So as now we look at trying to make this like less terrible. 20 minutes later. Now, that is our first part. Let's go ahead and change all the names. 
export all of these then let's get on to working with this which is going to be a right pain in the butt so i don't need the transmission i can stay there so that's the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make a duplicate of this and this is going to have a clean front face then the other one can butt up to it hmm actually you know what that was, that was a lot easier than what i thought it was going to be first let's line that up then oh we got to do things like sumps and whatnot and now everything else oh god damn it one debt to society later now i go in and delete everything we don't need and we're not working with the piddly small engine so they can all be deleted times two that's 846 perfect now i did a quick control f and replace and i have to now Starter mode. Well, that's no good. That has to go back. Now, what we wanted to actually change was the sound configs. And that's where we go back in and grab the blend file name and put that there. Except I don't think I need that part. And that should be it. Aside from also grabbing the exhaust version and putting that there. Okay, good. Now that that part is done. Oh. I've been hunched over too long. I, I need to fix my posture. That was, that was sweaty coding right there. Now we bring in a J-beam, which is going to be the body to start with. And then realize that that is not what... Oh, I need a subframe, not a body. God damn it. The, oh, okay. Well, this, the fenders and everything are still from... Okay. Well, that makes life... Less ideal. Let's go ahead and import the fenders and then also the subframe. Now these are gonna have to be modified. GY and then I moved it. Hold on, I wrote this down. 0.68 meters. So close to a good number. And great. That's gonna be very unstable. And let's start grabbing these node offset doodads. And we're going to stick it on stuff like the bumper. And we know exactly how far forwards to move it because we kept note of that. And hey, presto. Now, uh, flex bodies. Did that have a flex body change? Oh, actually, it didn't. We don't need that. Re-export that without the extra things that we don't need. And then everything here is actually fine. Uh, the only reason why I needed a long nose body is so then I could get these in here, right? Yeah. Okay. I think now is the try top try the time to try this out. Control L to quickly reload everything in. <laughs> then we'll go in and please have the long nose body. Come on! Okay, things are coming along! Except the front subframe. Uh, what goes into- oh, we got the flex body. Uh, what else is in the subframe? We got the- oh, it's just the subframe. Okay, easy. What if we now control R this? Yep. That's a thing. So, <laughs> we've got a few problems, one including the engine. Still haven't changed that. Everything else, I think we're looking good. We've got some slots in here. Uh, engine. What did I, did I change that up? Yes, I did. Basta engine V16. And it'll go in here. Uh, bumper will take the node offset we used. Plop that in there. Front suspension will also move forwards. Radio support move forwards. Front subframe braces. That's going to be separate. For now, that can go away. Then with a quick little refresh we have... Perfect. But at least we now should have suspension weight. <sighs> now that the suspension should be working. I know what I did wrong. F4 import. J-beam file and... No, I did the subframe, didn't I? So why, is, why no suspension? Is there suspension? Oh, there is suspension. Okay, no, suspension is good. The only problem is, is our wheels now. Where do the wheels get made? Please have separate hubs, hubs, hubs. No. Are we gonna have to make a whole front suspension just to have different hubs? Yep, there's the front wheels. So we're gonna need to have our own front suspension. Hooray. Well, let's drag in the suspension. Let's make sure that it only calls upon our new suspension. Then in the wheel section, we have to take away make more minus 0.68 
So we'll copy that and we'll cheat. We'll just put it in here easy because I don't want to think. Becomes that. Please God, work. Work for me. Yes, okay. We don't have an engine yet and I don't know why. Oh, I didn't save the engine. Now if we refresh. Engine time. Intake manifolds non-existent. And then we got some pipes running over the engine, which is a problem. And a badge. Badging and lettering is going to have to be completely modified as well. Because it's one slot for all the badges, but the badges go to different areas. Makes life fun. Mm. It has like two engines, but yet it's not showing everything else. Got the big block, engine management empty, stock long lock, engine mounts, manifolds. Oh, I haven't changed the manifolds yet. Barrels. Oh, it's using the old intakes? Well, that's, there's, okay, there's a lot to change here. The intake V16, let's go have a look at that. Basto intake V16 stock. Basto intake V16 stock. No, it's in there. I don't understand. Two barrel carburetor? Oh, okay, so one of the things I did was I got rid of one of the intakes. And that was just the quad because it seemed superfluous. And then... There we go. Okay, four barrel. Then, okay, well, four. Uh, did I get rid of the wrong one? If we have a look at the intake now, we have quad carburetors. Perfect. Then we have twin four barrels. And then stock. Perfect. I don't know what's thudding and crushing, but let's see. Does this drive as is? It does. Over rev risk. That is a problem. Is it? No transmission? That's so confusing. Wait, did I... I accidentally put it into manual control mode. Oh, I'm an idiot. But hey, look at that. Our uh, compensatory long-nosed front vehicle is now working. You know, I'm going to be honest, I thought it would look a lot prettier, but... You know what it'll do? I think I also want that cut hood back in because I just realized that the cut hood is not for an exhaust, but yet for this intake manifold, maybe? We'll have a look. Or maybe that's the bulging hood. Actually handles pretty darn good. I mean, it's pulling a little bit to the left, so let's do a refresh. A damage suspension ever so slightly. Okay, we haven't increased the power yet and increased the ability for it to take more power because there is more cylinders for it to divide the power amongst, you know, math things. This is actually doing pretty well. I also haven't increased the weight of the engine as well. So when I say it's handles good, I haven't quite gotten there yet. There we go. All right. Um, I suppose first things nodes currently the node weight is 40 well that's getting increased to 80 then everything that is further forward so it should be these ones are going to get moved forwards 0.68 and now our engine nodes are up for rod perfect okay is that all we need i think that's working pretty good hmm okay uh, next, hoods. Start pulling in the new names for things. Then start changing the flex body names, which was long nose. Now, if we do a little refresh, hood is on. Perfect. Okay, there is a few little problems here. One of which is this is not the right hood. The other thing is I need to modify said hoods. So G, Y, minus point. Six, eight, perfect. I think we're gonna move these back a little bit to help with the collision mesh, and that should do it for these. And that should move everything further forwards. Ah, now, if we just pop that, press that, we are down a little bit, so it's, yeah, that's a problem. We'll figure that out later. But for now, this, let's put the right hood on. Let's go induction hood? Yeah, there we go. That's a problem. Because this engine is canted backwards, it's wanting to play funny buggers. Nah. I think we're actually done. I am surprised. Wait, you know what? Hold on. I am not done. For starters, what is this? The hell? Is that the rear bumper? Uh, bring the body back up. Bumper rear. Ah, oh, I'm an idiot. The front bumper. Wait. Hold on. Yeah, no, that's back. Wait, where's the front bumper? 
Is it on the subframe? It is on the subframe. I'm an idiot. Everything is all good and working out perfectly the way it was meant to. Uh, radiator lines are not hooking up, but we'll fix that in a second. I, uh, I really should have made this a dual axle, but I also kind of didn't want to. I just wanted to do just a long nose, just because engine is starved of oil. Why is that happening? Let's drive this to a flat area. Maybe that might be the issue there. We also haven't doubled the power yet. Hold on. Engine power numbers. Okay, so. Okay, lots of math died. And to 20. Now we move on to other things. Engine idle RPM, engine idle roughness. These apparently were a lot smoother, so that's going to be brought down. You know what? Actually, a lot. As for friction, that's going to double, so that's going to become. Let's just round that up to 50. Engine braking torque becomes 2612. Uh, 132, dynamic friction. Let's pump that up to 0.7. Moving on, engine particulates. That'll be twice the amount, because it's twice the amount of engine. Uh, and then here we go. Damage threshold, maximum torque is going to now be two sevens of 1440. And over torque damage is going to become 800. That's basically it. If I refresh... That seems like a lot more power. That seems like it's got a lot more power. <laughs> why, why is it topping out before 3000 RPM? What? I didn't change anything like that. I'm so confused. What is happening? Sounds awesome though. Gotta admit, that is an epic sound. Have I done something wrong to the power graph? Okay, I missed 3000. And now if we refresh... Much better. Still only about 550 horsepower, but that's a lot of horsepower. Why does the engine keep starving of all- Got my Mozza set up ready, and we're gonna start off with just taking around the big V8 version. We're not going the V16 right away. Because we need to be able to test it to like a before and after sort of thing. Now I have to remember my key bindings. Yep, that's right. Do we- Nope, that's- Okay. We're in gear. Off we drive. I think I- Kind of... Is it changing automatically? It's changing automatically. Well, I don't have to work with a shifter then. That's annoying though. I thought I would do that. Brake. A little bit of right foot braking. That's what the pros do, right? I, I hear about it all the time. Nope, oh, nope. That turn. Okay, not much of a turn in beast. We are challenging handling a little bit at the same time. So, uh, handling, understeery, and then power oversteery, but that's supposed to be expected. We've got the big ass engine in here, not the track version, because we're not taking a track version around. And power up the hill, I think I might be in an automatic. Maybe that's why it doesn't want to uh, shift when I shift it to. Eh, we'll see. Doesn't matter too much. Okay, break. Oh, didn't break enough. I tried to light foot it and I stuffed it. All right, let's go again. Which one's the reset button? There we go. This time I'm going to try to break a little bit more, a little bit sooner, because we don't have a huge amount of speed. And full hard on the brakes. Oh, around we go. Yeah, we go. Oh, no, okay. Oh, okay. Still getting used to the new force feedback. It is a lot stronger than the last one. So wrestling a thing back from oversteer wouldn't be too hard. Okay, here we go, here we go. Penultimate corner. Ease off the brakes as we reach the apex. And lots of brake fade. That is a problem considering that the next one is going to be a lot heavier. But there's our abysmal time of a 217. Okay, let's see how we go. I also figured out why my shifter isn't working. Don't have it plugged in. Is my nose going beyond the line? It is. I get an advantage. Woo. <laughs> yeah, that's how that works. Uh-huh, love it. Okay, got a lot more torque. And it spins the wheel. So we do have wider tires. That will give us a slight advantage, but gonna be honest, we got extra weight. Still spinning the wheels quite a lot. Breaking. Oh, turning in. It turns in so much better somehow. Despite the nose that's turning in, 
being in the next postcard. So you kind of have to like predict when to turn in. It t it just turns. It goes. It handles so nicely. I think this alone is enough to make the car that much better. Oh my god. That's so good. It actually- oh my god, this handles so much better! I was expecting the weight to be terrible, but it's not. I mean, the tires are helping a little bit. Oh, oil overheating, that's... That's not great. We gotta do something about that eventually. I think I know what to do there. I think there's like a... Extra cooling things we didn't- Connecting rod bearings damage? Ah, oh, god damn it. I think we're probably losing power now. But the brake and turn in is so good. Are we even going to make it to the end of the lap? Nope. No, we're not. God damn it. Let's reach over my sim rig here and do some editing. Okay. Let's go again. Okay. Hopefully no cylinder wall damage this time. That was a confusing one. I don't still fully understand it. Okay. We have a lot more weight than what we do grip. So we need to break earlier. Okay. Brakes completely went just then. Fuck. Okay, this time we're going to break a little bit sooner. Expecting those brakes to fade. There we go. Immediately, like clockwork, brakes are done. Even breaking uphill. Just no good. Is it on? Oh, is it a little too quickly? It, oh god, this turns in so much nicer. Just because that front axle is in front of the weight as opposed to under the weight. And understeer. God damn it. But there we go. Over 10 seconds faster. And I get the feeling that the tires are the limiting factor either way. The only thing that's really going to make a huge difference here is that gigantic hood. Let's be honest though. The thing that this is really designed for is for highway cruising. So let's see what top speed we can reach with this absolute monstrosity. Come on, change gears, change gear. There you go. Okay, into top gear, cruising down the highway. Wait, really? Is that top speed? Do we not have another gear? I don't. I think we're limited to four speeds. We might have to. Okay, you know what? All right, fair enough. First drive. Um, I'm thinking a longer race drive. Oh, r r final drive, whatever. You get the idea. Transmission four speed. Let's go to a five speed sport. Sounds good to me. Now let's see what speeds we can do. Absolutely shredding tires for absolute days. Even with the longer gear ratios, the car is like, brav. Got over a thousand Newton meters of torque. Uh, put, put what that is in uh, foot pounds for the people that use the funny numbers. Oh, we're overheating. That's no good. But 240 kilometers an hour. 250. I think we're going to need to take this to something like a grid map. Oh, dear. No, oh, that's not gone well at all. You know what, screw it. Let's actually do a full Bonneville salt flat run. Hood is going to need to be the cow hood, so then we could fit bigger intakes in. That's obviously going to get changed into oct carburetors, because it's better. God, just just looking at that makes me happy. Race oil pan, because for some reason this thing still likes to stop itself. And moving on to the long block. Let's go stage three performance long block. I wonder if that's going to even survive. I, I don't know. Then some tubular exhaust, and I think that's about it, right? Wait, I forgot to put in the race adjustable drive, and that needs to be much, much longer. I think we can go with a little bit more RPM as well. Hopefully it won't disintegrate itself with its own centrifugal force. Me do words, I swear. Oh, oh, that is a good sound. We don't have nitrous turned on. Oh, God. This is meant to be sand, but it's like doing such hellacious burnouts that it's skidding like it's on concrete. Okay, here we go. Onwards and upwards. You know what, actually, hold on. We need an airspeed indicator. That's a knots, God damn it, I don't want that. All right, 250 kilometers an hour to 70. Is this gonna reach 400? Oh, sorry, yeah, the 320, which is 200 miles per hour. That would be awesome. 
Piston ring damage, damn it. That's fine. There we go, we got 200 miles per hour. 340. 350. Hell yes. And I have no extra gears. 360, 370. And there we go. 370 we maxed out. Okay, we can fix this. I can't fix the cylinder wall damage thing, but I can increase our uh, final drive ratio. So let's go to like, <laughs> let's go something wild, like a two to one ohm. Okay, two to one is the absolute maximum. Uh, NOS, we can also get ready with. I wonder if the oversteer reduction is what's been causing like the weird handling characteristics. Toggle activate, unassigned. Okay, let's do that. And I think I'm gonna set it to this button. Doesn't look like it's conflict. Okay, good. I'm also not like flooring it. Let's bring that up to 100% power. Okay, 280, 290. We're not even top gear. 300, 310, 200 miles per hour. Okay, we're slowing down. Nitrous is not working. Okay, switch down. 320, 330. Oh, wait, I was looking at uh, wheel speed, not air speed. 40. 50. 60. Nope, okay, gear ratio is too high and not enough nitrous. 10, oh, 20. Nice. Good. 50 kilowatt shot. Let's go. Next step up is 100. Let's hope that doesn't kill the engine. And I feel that the 260 that we reached earlier, or whatever it was, it's kind of the maximum. Because this is struggling now. We're going to run out of NOS. 360? Okay. Come on. Come on, baby. You can do 370? Oh, hell yes. Come on. We're going to run out. 380? Come on. We're almost out. 385? 6, 7, 8, 9. Oh, no. We run out of nitrous. But you know what? It's actually holding its speed. And the steering wheel is not very subtle at the moment. That was the wrong button, hold on. You can see it's like shaking there. And you can see the force feedback thing as well. That's pretty wild. Yeah, I'm surprised it's actually holding its speed. In with the piston ring damage. The only thing I think I have left to do on this is to make a race config. You know what basically like this one is. And fix that hood poking through where the trumpets are. That's uh, that's no good. And there we go, the end of the track. Oh, oh, landed it! Stuck the landing. Ah, the force feedback is playing funny buggers with the wheel. It's flying off. There we go. She'll be right, mate. It'll buff out. Well, that has been today's video. And I think that this is probably one of the cooler builds. I'm kind of regretting not going the two axle. I love the way it looks now, but just knowing the difference... Maybe I'll do it one day, and maybe I'll revisit the whole supercharger situation and do a video on that. Uh, hit, a, hit the like button if you want to see that one. That's how that works. Uh, make sure you're subscribed and all that sort of stuff as well. This has been a lot of fun. I liked the result. There's a little bit of stuff I have to touch up on this before it goes live to the repository, but it will be basically as it is now. For now, though, I would like to thank my channel members who make this so much more possible for me to keep doing. Specifically, however, I would like to thank the Rogue Tick the Crayon Priest for being a top-tier channel member. For everyone else, though, I'll catch you all next time. Goodbye.